All right, here's something interesting. Um, bypassing the emitter degeneration resistor in a feedback configuration, or what some call the feedback configuration of a common emitter amplifier. This is the traditional way of doing it, where you got a capacitor, and it uh, it boosts your gain, but it's not very good at low frequencies, and it's usually a quite large capacitor because this impedance is low. Um, but you can actively bypass a stage like this and not have to use a capacitor, and it is effective at DC. Um, the only problem is it's really only best done with split supplies, so you get positive and negative there, and then ground biasing your, your stage. But it can be done with single, uh, single supplies, and uh, I'll show you that later. But the practical implementation of this is actually rather simple. But uh, unlike a capacitor, it is going to affect your bias point. Um, and you will have to account for that. But basically, you know that this emitter voltage is, you know, you get that diode drop here down from zero volts. So it's minus 0.6 volts drop, right? Now, the voltage across this resistor is going to be minus 0.6 minus the minus voltage supply, which is 10 volts. Now, um, to find the current through that resistor, you just do Ohm's law, uh, and you'll get two milliamps through that resistor. That's why you have two milliamps there. Now, where does that two milliamps come from? Uh, half of it through each, so you get only one milliamp through the collector of, of our gain stage here. The other milliamp comes from the, the um, active bypass transistor. Now, you figure out the collector voltage the traditional way. Once you know the collector current, you find out that it's 5.3 volts. Now, that's with split supplies. That's just the, the concept behind it. This can be implemented with a single supply, but it, uh, the voltages get shifted around a little bit. You still use 20 volts total, so you have a 20 volt rail and a 0 volt rail. Then you'll have uh, just two 10Ks to give 10 volts on each base there. Um, this may or may not be the best way to do this, but just for demonstration purposes, um, this should work. Uh, I have a 9.4K, there's not glare, yeah, 9.4K resistor is the collector resistor. And then the same 4.7 for the, uh, the emitter. And it's a similar calculation, except VB is not zero. That's why this is in the equation here. So it's 10 volts now, minus 0.6, gives you 9.4 volts. And you know that, that the, uh, the drop across the resistor is still 9.4 because VEE is now zero because of this. Now the current through that resistor is still going to be two milliamps because you're going to have the same voltage across the same resistor. You're still going to get one milliamp through the collector again. You do that uh, the collector voltage calculation, you you get 10.6 volts on the collector. Now there is a bit of difference in the gain. Um, I w well I built the circuit uh, physically and I measured the betas of the two transistors. Beta 1 being the uh, the amplification stage, beta 2 being the bypass. Now, our E, the intrinsic emitter resistance, is about 26 ohms at room temperature. And, of course, that varies widely um, depending on the temperature. And, you know, if you so much as breathe on it, this value could go up. Um, but with a capacitor bias, your gain is basically equal to... RC over RE, well, kind of. I mean, it's kind of an assumption, but basically your gain can't exceed this value for this setup because it's like you're eliminating that. It's like you're dealing with these two. But with uh, unbypassed, in this case, you get a gain of two because, well, little less than two actually, but almost two because this is unbypassed. Now, and... Yeah, now for 
the active bypass, it's not going to be as much as this. It's going to be a little bit less, and you'll see why. Because you have two intrinsic emitter resistances. Now, both rails are considered to be shorts at AC. So it doesn't matter if you connect to the top or the bottom, you're still going to be grounding out the signal. Now, this is going to have the effect, same effect as the capacitor, or similar effect, but you're still going to have this voltage drop across RE here. So it's not going to be like perfect like the capacitor, but it will be imperfect throughout all frequencies. So it's like you just won't get as much amplification all throughout. And the way you calculate this is you have to know RC, obviously. It's, it's the same as the other one, except you have two RE because these are in series. It's as if these are in series. But now with these, you have to account for the bias networks because the this emitter here sees both its own bias network and the other bias network by a factor of beta for each of the betas. So you crunch all those numbers and you get you know tens of ohms and you get a gain of about 94. And uh, I think when I tested this, I got a gain of about 100. So I mean, that's pretty close, but we made an assumption. We made the assumption that before this AC, this AC signal was going straight to ground at the base. This base was grounded. That is not the case here. It's almost the case, but it's got to go through this, uh, these voltage dividers. So you have about 5k impedance before you can get to ground. So one way around that is to put, <laughs> ironically, a bypass capacitor there. If you do that, your gain goes up a little bit to about 119. I think I got about 120 or so. Um, now, I built a physical representation of this. Move my mic. Now, these are the waveforms. Well, okay, here's the circuit. You've got the, the amplifier here and the bypass here, and that's plugged into the emitter, as you can kind of see there. Now, these waveforms, focus, you get these, oh yeah, I got a one and a half killer signal being fed into the circuit and 20 volt rails as you can see. So, the bigger waveform is the output, the little one is the input, and the little one's about 40 millivolt peak to peak, the other, the other one's about four volts peak to peak. Um, I think, if I remember correctly, it's a gain, it's around 100. And that's with the, uh, that bypass cap I was talking about out. Now, if we pretend that we're doing this with uh, a split supplies, we'll get the maximum gain, we pop that in there, jumps up a little bit, as you can see. Now if I pop it out, you can see the difference. Jumps up. So uh, that's why that happens. I uh, hope you found this interesting.